Isn't that red light supposed to be on? The red light was on already. Yeah, I probably didn't turn it on. All right, Romans chapter 5 again. Romans chapter 5, Paul has stated in verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. As I begin to check, What Paul actually wrote, he says, the many. For as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall the many be made righteous. Same number. It's a number of representation. All men were made sinners in Adam. But that's not what Paul's talking about in verse 19. He's talking about the many who were made sinners. That same many shall be made righteous by Jesus Christ. But then he says these words in verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. As I read this begin to prepare for it it struck me of the importance of words when you read this verse moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound and I am sure that you being much like me when you think of words, you think of law, grace, abound. Important words, right? Important words, no doubt. These words stand out in the text. They're meant to stand out. But oft if you're like me, I pass over other things, other words, and really don't see the significance of them. Because he says, moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. But where? Do you see that? Yeah. W-H-E-R-E. -E. But where? But where? That is vital. Yes, sir. But where sin abounded, grace, and notice the next one, Little did. You, pass, you read a did, you go right by it, right? But where sin abounded, grace did. Not shall. Grace did. Now, you're probably brighter than I when it comes to this. You know that did means something that's in the past, right? So read it again. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Let's hear the law in this matter. Hear about hearing the law. And listen to what Paul said, even in this same epistle, Romans chapter 2. He says in verse 11 of that chapter, for there is no respect of persons with God. What you are in this world and who you are in this world does not matter to God. Years ago I was taught this means that God cannot show favor to one without intending favor to another. That's not what this is talking about. How much we are lied to by false Christianity. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For, now here it is, hear about hearing the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. It doesn't matter how much you hear it. 
If justification is sought by the law, you got to do it. You got to do it. That's what the word says about the hearing of the law. Countless thousands think because they put the law up on a wall or in some plaque that they're honoring God's law. It has nothing to do with honoring God's law. To honor God's law, you got to do it. It's not the hearers of the law only, but the doers of the law. Hear the magnitude of the law. Paul gives us the magnitude of the law in another epistle. In Galatians, he says these words, Galatians chapter 3. Listen to what he says in verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Now these two passages are not contradictory. One is simply taking the law to its true magnitude. It's not the hearers of the law only that are just before God. It's the doers of the law. But now Paul clearly makes it, he makes it clear, if you're going to do the law, you've got to do it perfectly exactly. for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which were written in the book of the law to do them exactly. we as human beings like to pick and choose what parts of the law we like oh, yeah. right. something to us that seems vague and antiquated that really don't matter what about the abolishing of debts ever so many years? Hmm? What about the releasing of all captives ever so many years? What about all these things? It all matters. Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which were written in the book of the law. To what? He hasn't forsaken that. To do them. That's what they said. Do them. Here's number three. Hear the voice of the law. Same epistle as we're in this morning. Romans chapter 3. Hear the voice of the law. Verse 19 of Romans 3. Now we know that what things soever the law saith. Hear the voice. Here it is. It saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty of before God therefore by the deeds of the law there shall be no flesh justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin so then Paul has written here that the law entered that the offense might abound isn't that what he says now I ask in spite of hearing about hearing the law. Men hear the law and yet continue to tout their doing. When it says it's not the do hearers of the law but the, the doers, they say, well I've done. You remember the rich young ruler, all these things have I done from my youth up. What? He was a liar. He was a liar. He hadn't done all these things. No one has. There's not a just man upon the face of the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Amen. Hear the magnitude of the law again. Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things. Do you still tout your doing when you hear that? Some men do. Don't they? You, you can quote that verse to them. They still tout their doing. Well, I give it my best shot. The law doesn't demand your best shot. The law demands perfection. Amen. Perfection. Hear the voice of the law that all the all the world all the uh, that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world become guilty before God. Yet some still tout their doing. Right? If it were merely the declaration of the truth of the law, then everyone would shut up about what they're doing in God's sight. Right? right? Yeah. They would shut up. Now I ask, has the offense abounded to all without exception? The law entered that the offense might abound. Has it abounded? 
most people, at least most in my experience, and I feel the testimony of the scripture certainly declares this, most, rather than when hearing the law, rather than shutting up before God, they begin to spout forth of how much they do, of their efforts, of how good at least they try to be. Has the laws entering increased the offense to every son and daughter of Adam? Has it abounded? Has the offense abounded? No. No. Religion doesn't want to deal with these things. They want to read over, hit the high points like grace, abound, law, and simply pass through it. And then give man something to do under grace, which is nothing more than legalism. And give something, a man, a man or a woman something to do under grace or something to do to get God's grace. And they just pass right on through it. Do I get ask? Has the laws entering increased the offense? Made it abound to all without exception to every son and daughter of Adam? May God give us the proper perspective here this morning. First of all, sin is sin in God's sight, law or no law. Amen. That's right. Well, go back and read. What, what, those that sin without law still will perish. Without law, but they'll still perish. Exactly. Right? Because sin is sin. The law didn't make sin. That's it. That's right. Sin was in the world even before the law came along. It was. <laughs> so much so that God drowned the whole world, save eight human souls at one time because of it. Yes, sir. And sin abounded even in the plains where the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were, where God rained fire down from heaven. There was no law then, but God wiped those people out. Didn't he? Sin is sin in God's sight, law or no law. I mean, look at it. Verse 13 of our, of our chapter. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned. Amen. May it be we get the proper perspective. What is Paul talking about here? What he's talking about is the law entered. Now, it's the same word entered, used throughout the scripture where it means simply to come into. But Paul here not talking about the giving of the law at Sinai. He's not talking about the giving of the law at Sinai. He says the law entered that the offense might abound. It means the law entered. It's the word to supervene additionally. That's over and above and to do so stealthily. Unawares. As a matter of fact, there are two other places that this word, most of the places you read the word enter, there's a regular Greek word for it. It's a part of this word, but this word has more to it than that. It simply means to come into being, to enter, or to come into, to be brought into. But here's the word. Let's read the other two passages, and maybe you'll get a little idea of what I'm talking about. Look at Galatians chapter 2. Verse 4. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily, secretly, stealthily. Do you see it? In other words, this was something that wasn't manifestly visible. You see? That's the word, privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. It's not something that's evident to everyone. It's secret. It's under the covers. Here's another one. Turn to Jude. Jude in verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares. There's the same word. Crept in Unawares. Now, granted, those are two negative uses of the word. Are they not? Paul uses it here, though, as a positive use of the law. Moreover, the law entered. Do you see it? It supervened over and above. But it comes in stealthily. <laughs> what is he talking about here? The law entered that the offense might abound. Now, listen, I'm going to say it right out. 
I have said before that God does a law work in a man's heart. That's not so. Because the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did. Amen. Did. Even before the law entered. And the law cannot even enter until, the, until grace has already abounded. You see it? For where sin abounded, grace did. Much not where, when God teaches you the law. If it were that, if it's a law work, then why ain't we preaching the law? Hmm? Why don't we preach the law if it's about a law work? Because it ain't about a law work. It's about grace work. We don't like to hear when we've been wrong. Well, I believe I've heard that all my life. Then you heard wrong. I've held to that all my life. You've held wrong. Even where Paul talks about being brought into bondage before the spirit of adoption, he said, for God hath not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear. Not the law. That's right. God does this work. Exactly. And he does the law work. Uh -huh. That law work, what people call it, law. He does his work with his law secretly. Yeah. Stealthily. He does, if it's not so, then preach the law. Preach to men how bad they are in light of the law. That ain't the point. Because you can preach the law to them and what do they do? They tout their doing. They tout how good they are. But where sin... No, sorry. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. That's a work of grace. That's a work of grace. The law entered that the offense might abound. This is not a general statement of God's giving of the law. This is talking about God Almighty proving to any individual man or a woman how corrupt they are in his sight. Amen. And it takes not law to do that. It takes a work of God's grace to do that. The law entered that the offense might abound. But where? See it? Where sin abounded. Yeah. Exactly. Wherever it abounds, wherever sin abounds, yeah. grace what? Did. Do you see it? Mac, I've read this for years. I've been trying to preach the gospel for almost 31 years now. Hadn't seen that, but just past year or so. Hadn't seen it. We take what men say, people like me, don't take what I say and just say, boy, that sounds that's a good message. Am I preaching what the book says? You can still preach the truth, but still twist things un uh -uh. unintentionally, David. Picking up on somebody. Well, that's a nice phrase. I like the law work. It ain't a law work. It's a grace work. It's a God work. That's what it's all about. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, and nowhere else. You hear what I said? In the context, oh, I know there's election, predestination. That's grace in Christ before the world began. But he ain't talking about before the world began here. He's talking about as an Adam. He's talking about after the fall. That's what he's talking about. And the law entered. It comes in stealthily. Who does that work? God does. God does that work. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded... Grace did much more abound. So again I say, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, and nowhere else. When men and women see the offense abounding, there is where God's grace did, not will, superabound. Right? Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I tell you what, this book, this, this chapter, there has been so much false, so many false words and doctrines given. And they claim it's right here in this book. But if they simply seen what Paul says... Wipe out everything you think you know. And what does Paul say? Because he was moved by the Spirit of God to write exactly what God meant. Amen. Yes, sir. 
He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what God says. I know us preachers are not supposed to do that. But when I have been wrong, and I realize I have been wrong, I will tell you where I have been wrong. Because that's what it's all about. This pride that's within us. I just don't see it that way. That's your problem. You don't see. I don't care if you're a believer. You just don't see. Well, God ain't revealed it to me. That's exactly right. But don't blame him. Don't blame him. One, you have the spirit of God in you. If you're his. Two, it's right here in black and white, as you've already pointed out, Joe, translated into our own language. It's right there. The problem is this. We still like to fight against God. There's that flesh in there that's fighting against God no matter what. That's what it's about. But where, I love this, but where sin abounded, grace did, did, past tense. The, the, the law will never enter so the offense might abound where grace ain't already first much more abounded. Do you see what he's saying there now? This is not, well, God gave the law and now since we see the law, we see how bad we are and then God gives us grace. That's not what he's talking about. That's saying this, if you see how corrupt you are, whether you understand it, be it through the law or not, okay, if you do, that's not a work of the law on you. That's the work of God's grace in you. So again I say, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. I'll present to you three points of truth here. Number one, one of the first manifestations of God's grace. I'm talking about a manifestation. Remember, God's grace is eternal. Yes, sir. Uh, we were, some of the, the elect were given the grace of God in Christ before the world began. But we don't see that. We see the effect of that take place through things in time. What grace did much more abound. One of the first manifestations of God's grace in a soul is that that soul abounding sin is known, felt, and acknowledged. I am corrupt before God. If there's no abounding sin, there is no reigning grace. You hear, you hear you see what I'm saying now? Where there's no abounding sin, there's no reigning grace. And we don't preach law so that sin might abound. The law entered. It comes in stealthily. That's God's work. Why? Because where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Here Paul, the apostle, the apostle Paul himself, when he was writing this book, inspired of the Spirit of God, and he records these words as we have it in chapter 7, verse 24, O oh, wretched man that I am. Why? Because he said when the commandment came. When it came. Now when did it come? Well, it, it originally come back on Sinai, but that ain't what he's talking about. He was born and raised with the law. And then bragged about what he did for God, didn't he? But he said, but when the commandment came, sin revived. And I did what? I died. And the commandment I thought was in the life. This is what he's saying. I found to be under what? It's death. Death. That didn't happen through somebody preaching the law to Paul. Uh huh? No. Uh uh. Here, go back and read even David, the sweet psalmist of Israel. In sin did my mother conceive me. What taught him that? No, more important. Who taught him that? God did. Amen. God did. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Mm. So again I say number the first point here is the one, one of the first manifestations of God's grace in a soul is that in that soul abounding sin, sin is acknowledged it's felt and it's tasted we began to quit trying to justify sin and acknowledge sin for what it is. It takes the reigning grace of God to do that. Yes, sir. That's right. It takes the reigning grace of God to do that. A soul where abounding sin is, that's a soul where grace is. That's right. Because there's not too many people that see sin abounding. There you go. Is there? Exactly right. Now is there? 
Even if we don't brag on ourselves, what do we do? We point our finger at somebody else, but look what you did. And then try to excuse something we want to hold to. It never works. Not with God. It might work in your conscience. It might work for other folk. But you're the one. You've got to stand before God. Not me. Not preachers. Not men. God. Here's number two. The law does not cause a man to cry out for mercy. Did you know that? I've already read it. The law causes you to shut up. Right? The law doesn't cause you to cry out for mercy. The law causes you to shut up. That every mouth may be what? Stopped. Stopped. The law, when it's done by a work of God. The law, when it enters by a work of God, it'll shut your mouth. Before God. Before God. The law does not cause a man to cry out for mercy. The law forces a man to shut up and sit still to hear of Christ. That's what it'll do. That's what it'll do. But only after grace has superabounded to open a man's eyes to his own inner corruption. In other words, I say it again, it's a grace work, not a law work. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did already much more abound. Do you see it now? Now maybe you've already seen, always seen or seen that for a long time. I didn't. David, I was, I was blind to that. Why? Because I I'd already, know, I already heard other men say this or say that about it. And rather than look at it myself, being noble like what was it? The Bereans. To look and see, are these things really so? Just because a man says it, don't make it so. Just because he's using scriptural language, don't make it so. He may use those big words, grace, law, abound. All that sounds, but what about where and did? Huh? What about where and did? That's just as vital, Joe, as the law and the grace and the, the abounding. It's a grace work, not a law work. Why, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And you see, the fact is, I always knew that by experience. I just had trouble bowing to it up here in my mind. Because I knew that's how it took place. That's how it takes place. Yes, sir. That's right. God will cause a man or a woman to see their inner corruption. By his own stealthy work. Hmm. Number three. And this is a kind of a summary to the other two. The law is not the key here. Superabounding grace is the key. Yes. Superabounding grace is the key. Why? Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Remember what that word entered is. The law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. There's the key, superabounding grace. And yet, religion teaches. Well, that's why we do the law. That's why we hang the law everywhere. This will show people how bad they are, and then they'll flee to God's grace and, and then do something to get God's grace. You're just talking about more law works there. Just because you're using Bible words don't mean you're teaching the truth of God. I think it was W.E. Best that almost all error and heresy has just enough truth to make it palatable to the natural man. Just a few good Bible words in there. The law is not the key. Superabounding grace is the key. This is why we preach Christ and not law. Right? That's why we preach Christ and not the law. If it were not that way, then we ought to be preaching the law. But we're not. This is why we preach the gospel and not enact law. I mean, the natural mind says, well, what better way to show people how bad they are by setting up rules, and then when they break them, they'll see how bad they are. No, we're so depraved, we'll lie about the very rules. 
We'll twist them and distort them to fit our own self. We'll justify ourselves based upon somebody else that did something maybe just a little bit worse. Mm -mm. This is why we preach the gospel and not the law. Here's, let me just conclude. Four brief statements and a couple little words about them. Let us define the law and its purpose. Oh yeah. Let us define the law and its purpose. Paul does all throughout his epistles, doesn't he? But let us preach Christ. Let us preach Christ. Here's the second thing. Let us express the law's demands. Sure. Let us express the law's demands, but let us stress the preeminence of Christ. You see? See the difference? And see how they are both actually fit together? Right? Let us define the law and its purpose, but let us preach Christ. Let us express the law's demands, but let us stress the preeminence of Christ. Number three, let us acknowledge the law's glory. Yes, yeah. yeah. Death. That's the law's glory, isn't it? Second Corinthians, look at Paul. The glorious condemnation of what? Death. We can acknowledge the law's glory, but let us proclaim Christ's glory. What is that? Life. Amen. Life. The law shows us our unrighteousness. It still today shows me mine. If I start reading that law, go back in that Old Testament, start reading that law, I see it all over the place now. I didn't at one time. And even now today, Mason, when I read that law, I still miss some of it today. You know what I mean? You go back and read that same passage a month later and all of a sudden something else will pop out at you. Uh huh? Whoa, I missed that. It's right there. You read the same words. Exactly. The law shows us our unrighteousness. Christ is our righteousness. Do you see what I said? He is. He is our righteousness. Because you ain't got none. Exactly. I ain't got none. And I show that all too often. I got none. He is our righteousness. So now let me read. Moreover, the law entered. It now it entered. Huh? That the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, why is why was that so? Because grace did much more abound. That's what he's talking about. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal what life? How? By Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, he has to start this work. He has to keep this work up. He has to finish this work. Amen. That's it. See, you see what Paul's saying there now? That's what he's saying there now. That gives all the glory to God. Yes, sir. And nothing nor no one else. Not even the law. We don't glorify the law. We don't worship the law, Joe. We honor it. We acknowledge it for what it is. Yes, sir. But our honor, uh, the honor that we give, our worship is all directed toward God in the person of Jesus Christ. He is truly all in all. Amen. Is he not? If you understand what the law says about you, it's only because grace did much more abound. Amen. That's the only reason. If you understand your corruption, if you can taste your corruption, it ain't because you're great, you got great insight when you've seen the, read the law. Uh-uh. Because God Almighty worked a work of free, sovereign, reigning grace in your soul. Yes, sir. And be happy for that. While you mourn for your sin, be happy that God showed you that. Huh? Because why? Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did. You see, it's there. It's that, that's the evidence. There's the proof. It did much more abound. Exactly. Huh? Father, be with us as we continue and as we eat. Be with others. Lord, our hearts and minds are toward them as well, Lord. And Lord, forgive us of our sins. I ask in Christ's name. Amen.